you can't, you can't choose how you feel. You can't. Yeah, maybe you can go and become a Buddhist monk and meditate for four months and get full control of your physiology and yeah, 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 technically you can control how you feel, but you and I can't. We got a job. You got kids you got to raise. You can't, that, that's not possible. So you can do something else. You can actually disregard your feelings. You can become the kind of person that is so in tune with the values that you have and what you actually want that when feelings rise up, you can choose to act however you want, despite them. Even if you're tired, you can still go to the gym. Even if you're annoyed with your spouse, you can still speak in a manner that's loving. Even if you don't feel like doing that hard work, you can still push yourself to do it. Your feelings aren't a choice. Your behavior and your thoughts are always a choice. Yeah, so is this probably in the category of emotional intelligence, yeah? I think it's both emotional intelligence and it is the skill that nobody practices, which is self-monitoring. So the greatest capacity, I believe, in the next 10 years for people, particularly as technology accelerates, is do you have the ability to focus on what matters and do you have control over your thoughts and actions? And so, you know, emotional intelligence, yes. I tend to think about emotional intelligence more about reading other people and kind of understanding who you are and how you are. This, to me, all, took it a step further. Because I was always a big EQ person and the Emotional Intelligence 2.0 book and loved that stuff, even when my life was in a train wreck. Had no idea how to apply it. And, you know, that's the other thing, is that at the end of the day, what's missing for most of us is tools. So, you know, a lot of people that mainline personal development content have been reading about making changes for 10 years. But they don't do it. How did you get out of that train wreck, by the way? The five-second rule. So, but... You can't take those five seconds to the bank, right? Like, so, oh, yes, you can. So how'd you do it? Like, okay. break it down. What are you going to do? What, what would you do if you had a restaurant that was failing? Probably figure out how to cut bait or yes. um, sell the assets yes. or pivot or flip it yes. or doing something yes. else. Yes, and all those things require you to have conversations. They require you to have re do research. They require you to walk into a bank. They require you to renegotiate things with your landlord. You have the answers up here. Do you have the courage and the tool to push yourself to do those things that are terrifying? Yeah. That it's easier to tell yourself, oh, that's not going to work, so I, I might as well not even try it. You have yeah, no it idea. Yeah. Yes. And so what happened is once I started using it to get out of bed on time, you know, five, four, three, two, one, get up, I started to notice, holy cow, all day long there are these five second windows where I know what I should be doing. Maybe I should use this stupid thing to take control of my head and push myself to do those things too. And so I went from 